Director Ray, would you proceed with your opening statement, please? Good morning, uh, Mr. Chairman, Ranking Member Grassley, members of the committee. On behalf of the entire FBI, uh, I want to begin by saying to the brave women who testified here this morning, Ms. Biles, Ms. Maroney, Ms. Nichols, and Ms. Raisman, and I gather there were some others uh, here today who were among the many who Nasser hurt. I'm deeply and, and profoundly sorry to each and every one of you. I'm sorry for what you and your families have been through. Uh, I'm sorry that so many different people let you down over and over again. And I'm especially sorry that there were people at the FBI who had their own chance to stop this monster back in 2015 and failed. And that is inexcusable. It never should have happened. And we're doing everything in our power to make sure it never happens again. Now, before I became FBI director, I was generally familiar with the Nasher story uh, shortly after his arrest in 2016. And I remember even then being appalled that there were so many people who had failed to do their jobs and keep these young women safe from that predator. But after I became FBI director and when I learned that there were people at the FBI who had also failed these women, I was heart sick and furious. I immediately ordered a special review by our inspection division to try to get to the bottom of it. That review led in part to the Inspector General's own review, and I'm grateful to Inspector General Horowitz for his team's uh, extensive and independent work. Uh, I want to be crystal clear. The actions and inaction of the FBI employees detailed in this report are totally unacceptable. These individuals betrayed the core duty that they have of, uh, of protecting people. They failed to protect young women and girls from abuse. And the work we do certainly is often complicated and uncertain, uh, and we're never going to be perfect. But the kinds of fundamental errors that were made in this case in 2015 and 16 should never have happened, period. And as long as I'm FBI director, I'm committed to doing everything in my power to make sure they never happen again. The FBI cannot carry out its vital mission of protecting the American people without trust. And in this case, FBI agents, certain FBI agents, broke that trust repeatedly and, and inexcusably. And to pretend otherwise would be yet one more insult to the survivors. Failures like the ones that happen in this case threaten the very confidence we rely on every day to keep people safe. So I want to make sure the public knows that the reprehensible conduct reflected in this report is not representative of the work that I see from our 37,000 folks every day. The actions instead of the agents described in this report are a discredit to all those men and women who do the job the right way with uncompromising integrity, the way the American people rightly expect and deserve. Now, throughout my career as a prosecutor and now at the Bureau, I have found that the agents and officers who investigate crimes against children and sex crimes are among the most compassionate and fiercely dedicated out there. And I suspect a number of you on the committee have had the same experience on your end. And I am grateful to the women who came forward today so that I can say to everyone that there is no more important work in law enforcement than helping victims of abuse. It's work that's got to get done right every single time. It is essential that we do everything we can to ensure that victims continue to come forward with confidence that their reports are going to be thoroughly and aggressively investigated. A big part of that is accountability and holding our folks to the highest standard our work requires. When I received the Inspector General's report and saw that the supervisory special agent in Indianapolis had failed to carry out even the most basic parts of the job, I immediately made sure he was no longer performing the functions 
of a special agent. And I can now tell you that that individual no longer works for the FBI in any capacity. As for the former Indianapolis special agent in charge, the descriptions of his behavior also reflect violations of the FBI's longstanding code of conduct and the ethical obligations for all FBI employees, especially senior officials. Now that individual has been gone for the Bureau for about three and a half years, having retired in January of 2018 before any review launched. And I will say, I will say it is extremely frustrating that we are left with little disciplinary recourse when people retire before their cases can be adjudicated. But let me be clear, people who engage in that kind of gross misconduct have no place in the FBI. I can also assure you that the FBI's response is not limited to dealing with those who failed so profoundly back in 2015. To make sure that something like this never happens again, we've already begun fully implementing all of the Inspector General's recommendations. That includes strengthening our policies and procedures, strengthening our training to firmly underscore the critical importance of thoroughly and expeditiously responding to all allegations of sexual assault or abuse. Because, as I said a moment ago, the American people are counting on us to get this done right every time. And finally, I'd like to make a promise to the women who appeared here today and to all survivors of abuse. I am not interested in simply addressing this wrong and moving on. It's my commitment to you that I and my entire senior leadership team are going to make damn sure everybody at the FBI remembers what happened here in heartbreaking detail. We need to remember the pain that occurred when our folks failed to do their jobs. We need to study it. We need to learn from it. That is the best way I know to make sure that this devastating tragedy is never repeated. So thank you, Mr. Chairman, Ranking Member Grassley, and members of the committee uh, for the opportunity to testify today. Uh, I look forward to your questions. Thank you. Inspector General.